This is the Business of Apps podcast, bringing you actionable insights from the leaders of the global app industry and the world's fastest growing apps. You can find more app news, data and analysis over at businessofapps.com. Welcome to the Business of Apps podcast. On this show, we invite app industry professionals to cover various topics. We promise to do our best to keep it both insightful but brief. In this episode, we have Seth Miller, CEO at the Rap Chat. Seth, welcome to the VSF Apps Podcast. Hey, appreciate you having me on. Terrific. Thank you for coming. Okay, I think it would be fair to say that we all love music. Yeah, some of us may not be that much into music, but you would be really hard-pressed to find somebody who doesn't like any music at all. In 2001, Apple launched iTunes, and all of a sudden, we've got a bunch of songs sitting on iPods in our pockets. Today, we stream music on Spotify, Apple Music. Pretty much all the songs we ever wanted to listen are just a couple taps away. What about writing music? Like, with the same ease as listening is. So this is the moment when Rap Chat comes in, and we have the app's founder, Seth, to tell the story of the app's success. Okay, before doing all that, let's just talk about you, Seth, first. Tell us about yourself. What is your background? Yeah, for sure. So I uh, grew up in Columbus, Ohio, which is where I'm currently living now. And yeah, I started working on Rap Chat in college. So been on the journey for, yeah, over seven years now. And wow. no better place to start a company than than at school, in my opinion, because I could see, you know, and observe all the behaviors going on. And, you know, for for Rap Chat, it was actually kind of scratching my own itch where a hobby of mine was to just freestyle with my friends and, you know, not necessarily record real music in a studio or anything, Mm -hmm. but just put on beats and just rap for fun. And this was kind of like the era of apps were really starting to blow up. And so um, yeah. Snap, Instagram, Vine, RIP, but uh, it was kind of coming of age for just like really cool and fun apps on your phone that helped you create and share content. So I really, you know, I just watched this happen. It was like, this needs to happen for music. And that was kind of it. And I've always been entrepreneurial, you know, I've always had a list of ideas and still do of, of things to build, but I really like the idea of, of starting my own company and yeah, still still on the journey and, and learning a lot every day. That's cool. Let's talk about the rap chat itself. I bet there is a reason why it rhymes with Snapchat, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So initially, rap chat was it's a little different than, than how it's uh, the interface and flow is today. But basically, back mm-hmm. in the day, you could record like freestyle. So it'd be like short snippets, send it to your friends and it would like disappear. So it's a very <laughs> similar experience to like the OG Snapchat where everything disappeared. Right. There was no stories. And ironically enough, the name, I was actually pitching the idea under a different name. And like during my pitch, I was like, you know, just kind of explaining it's like Snapchat for rap. And someone came up and they're like, dude, you just got called rap chat. And I was like, yeah, that sounds good. So bought the domains and rolled with it from there but but yeah it's evolved to much more than that and happy to give a quick overview on like what the app does if if that's helpful yeah just a good just a you know kind of thumbnail sketch just a few uh highlights yeah sure so rap chat uh we like to think of it as the easiest way to make music on your phone so you know we really put a recording studio in your pocket for the everyday artist so whether you're just there to have fun with your friends or you want to make you know, a full length masterpiece. We see the whole gamut of music creation. And, you know, our mission is to democratize music and just provide access that, you know, previously was was never really there for the long tail of people that want to make music around the world. So, you know, we've had over 7 million artists on our platform creating music in over 100 different languages all over the world. And, and it's just been uh, a really fun experience. But yeah, the core the core value is being able to make a song on your phone. Um, and then we've also built kind of an end-to-end platform where there's a community aspect. You can collaborate with other artists. You can you know, participate in challenges. So it's really like a full-scale platform. That's awesome. And it works both on Android and iOS? Correct. 
Correct. Yeah. So Android, iOS, we're even starting to explore other platforms as well. Yeah, iOS is definitely the flagship product. We're still really solidifying some of the Android. Android audio is pretty hard. So um, really working out some kinks there, but making good progress. And yeah, I mean, we have we have users everywhere on both platforms. And so, uh, yeah, supporting quite a, a lot of devices and, and operating systems. Gotcha. I think another the reason why there is a problem with Android, because between these two companies, Apple and Google, <laughs> one company is now, uh, you know, one thing or two about what 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 about the music? <laughs> so it's definitely Apple. Yeah, yeah. And um, all right, so uh, we've got the brief uh, overview of what the app does. Let's talk about this popularity. What was the first move you've made that, that allowed the app to become popular? Yeah, so I think you know, kind of the first I don't know, 10x feature was just providing the ability to share your, your song externally. So like I mentioned mm -hmm. before, it was very much like kind of a closed system. Like you had to have a friend on the app and you had to be Facebook friends back in the day. And um, right. it, it was kind of closed and there's something, you know, fun and nostalgic about that. But eventually we just found out that people wanted to share these songs to their other social networks. And so once we, you know, gave them the ability, we created a link for every song and a landing page if you didn't have the app. Um, I mean, that's really contributed to most of our growth today, you know, like just that viral loop of coming in, creating content, sharing content, it brings other users in. And that was, I mean, it sounds really obvious now, but that was a, a game changing moment. Yeah, I think it's very powerful because between many things we would like to share, I think music, one of the top things on the list, because this is th something you're creating, probably, you know, creating a movie would be the... The second thing you would like to share with somebody to get their yeah. opinion, but uh, I guess there are love in uh, for music even greater than for movies because we're not that great in front of a camera, but we may be really awesome with a mic and uh, just you know giving your talent out. Great. So uh, my next question is that so if you look at the story of any popular app, uh, there's always this chapter called retention. You know, getting users is wonderful and fine, but how do you retain all these people? What do you guys were doing to minimize the app users' churn? Yeah, for sure. I mean, retention's king, like one of the most important things we've consistently worked on. I think for us, I mean, just generally, it's always about building a great product. Like that's gonna, you know, you can of course create all these, you know, quote unquote hacks and bring people back with you know, whether it's pushes or emails or external triggers, but at the end of the day, they, it has to be a great product. You have to have, you know, product market fit and you have to really understand why people are there and what value they want out of the product. So for us, you know, we're really diligent about just having a pulse on like what our users want and what their mm -hmm. aspirations are and what features they like the most or what features are missing. So we're constantly running qualitative and quantitative analyses, you know, um, to, to figure these things out. And ultimately that feeds into our roadmap. So, um, you know, we can get into more of that later, I'm sure. But um, I think another thing for us was like early on, um, we built the core utility, right? Like the easiest way to make music on your phone. So as a recording studio in your pocket, like that's still, a you know, the core value proposition. But we noticed that people were spending a lot of time and they kept kind of i mean this goes through like qualitative research but like they wanted to post it to their profile so basically we built um you know a community social layer on top of the core utility that um, people had profiles there was feeds there's easier way to browse the beats that you record over you could collaborate with your friends so we saw um and even people that you didn't know like so now we've seen people on different continents meet on rap chat and make a song together so i think really that community layer um, added for sure a whole nother level of engagement and retention because you know it's you're investing time and social capital and you know you're there's also a lot of like groups being formed so you're forming these social circles on platform um, so i think that just from a like feature shipping standpoint that mm -hmm. was really game changing um, but in general, I mean, you know, you just, you ship a lot of product, like we ship a lot of product, we ship by learning, 
Um, again, we try and construct our roadmap based off, you know, all sorts of inputs, but really like what our users want and, and work backwards from there. Yeah, I think there's always this um, kind of a challenge for every developer. Okay, there are core features for my app. I'm launching the app with their grade. Then I have to start to move on and add something else. Do I end up uh, you know, in a situation like you know, iTunes at some point where you have everything in one app, music, books, yeah. Uh, yeah. movies, et cetera, et cetera, and the app was so bloated, but it was just one app. But I guess the uh, you know, Apple engineers were had really good intentions, but <laughs> at some point they decided to split the app because it's just too much for one app. So I think it's kind of a, should be in your roadmap as well. Let's try to be uh, cautious about what features we're adding in, right? Oh, for sure. I mean, sometimes it's removing features. Like we had, just to give you an example, we shipped, again, maybe this will come back, maybe it won't, but mm -hmm. at one point we had like a video recording feature in our studio as wow. well. And it just like, I mean, it was it was cool. Like I, I still think I want to revisit that that concept, but ultimately it it kind of cluttered the experience. And, and then we found out our best users just wanted to record audio songs. Uh, right. And like, we weren't, you know, our tech wasn't to the level of like TikTok's video maker. So mm -hmm. instead of instead of trying to do that all in our app, we actually like have a partnership with TikTok we announced a few months ago where you'll be able to like natively export your audio and your songs mm -hmm. to TikTok and use mm -hmm. that to make your TikToks. And it'll be like, you know, that that makes a ton of sense. So totally. um, yeah, I think, you know, we have it's crazy. We have a backlog and I'm sure most, I mean, developers and, and app companies do, but we have a backlog of a thousand features. So it's like, you got to just prioritize. And I think, you know, it's, it's tricky, man. It's tricky. So it's, but it's a lot of fun. Gotcha. Uh, when you look at the steps you've made to retain reach uh, rep chat app users, what steps do you believe can be applied to other apps, not necessarily musical app, something universal? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think a lot of these like mental models are universal. Um, you know, there's there's obviously in, in startup land a good amount of frameworks published that are probably worth looking at. Like, you know, we went through 500 startups, so we were exposed to like Dave McClure's pirate metrics where, you know, it just kind of funnels down from like acquisition to activation to I don't even know what the rest is, but you can Google mm -hmm. that. Like, it's a pretty good framework. Um, there's some other ones, but I think it's hard because there's so much content out there about like how to get good at engagement yeah. retention. But I, sometimes it's just better to go back to like simplicity. So like for us, it's like, okay, you know, we get X amount of users in today. And we actually started like in our onboard, I'll give you an example. We started asking people like why they're here. So like, mm -hmm. are you here to make music your career? Are you here to just have fun with friends? And then you know, are you here to just make music as a hobby? And there's a couple other ones, but those are like the main ones. And then like, it's so much easier if you have, an anal I mean, you need analytics. Like that's, hopefully that's, you know, kind of obvious to understand what's going on, but then you're able to form like way better analyses because you, you want to analyze the group that's here to make music totally different than the people that are here to have fun. They have different engagement profiles, different retention profiles. So I think that was a big unlock. Like instead of looking at our whole user base like at once and being like, oh, day one retention for the entire user base is X. It's like, no, you got to slice and dice because people are probably there unless you're just like, this This maybe is not totally applicable if you're like a utility app and you're solely acquiring users on like Facebook marketing and you know that like all these are there for a specific reason. But in general, you know, on a daily basis, you'll get a bunch of users that are there for different reasons and, you know, if you don't slice and dice your data, then you'll be kind of, it'll be, it'll be pretty cloudy. Right. So I think that was a big unlock is just like, I mean, it's going back to like, okay, can you find like the three main personas in your app and figure out why people are there? And one thing we did to do this or one framework we used was the product market fit engine that was published by the superhuman CEO. And it's basically like a qualitative survey that asks people like, you know, why you're there, how disappointing would you be if you could no longer use it? Like a few questions like that, but you get so much good data 
from that. And then, you know, you can use that to build your roadmap. And ultimately that should impact, positively impact engagement and retention. I mean, there's also obvious quick tactics too. Like we know that, you know, these eight different actions or flows will predict retention. So, you know, Mm -hmm. you can, you can model your like onboarding messaging to do that. So like on the second day, you might get a push that's like, Hey, did you know you could collaborate with your friends? Like we try and like peel back the onion as you onboard and you, Mm -hmm. you know, you can use your CRM and in messaging platforms to, to drive that home. Um, that, I mean, that'll always impact, you know, by some percentage points, but, um, yeah, it's kind of a holistic approach, uh, I'd say. And um, there's both art and science to like improving retention. Yeah, so you, you conducted the research to figure out what actual folks who are using your app really want. And it's like, I think it's pretty much, I think it's um, fair to say that any app has this kind of a problem because you have your ideal user in mind when you're reaching out to people yeah. you reach out this ideally big crowd of folks who, who you know have their own lives they're, these are different people they're going to be using your app differently and your idea was like let's pick up folks who are really into the app really dedicated then they're using the app a lot and this will be our the, kind of a driver for the features because these people really know what they want to do about with this app and they can tell you what features it's the app is missing at this point, right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So I know you've launched the subscription uh, for the app. How does it work so far for you guys? Yeah, I mean, it's great. We're finally making money. <laughs> we went a few <laughs> years just building product and community. Congrats. It's going well. I mean, we, uh, I think the business model subscriptions was a great fit for like our community and our dynamics as opposed mm-hmm. to going like the ads, ads driven business model. So we, we kind of made that decision last year and yeah, I mean, we're seeing like, it's, it's been great. We're, we're growing, you know, the conversion rates and all the high level numbers look really, really great and uh, starting to put our foot on the gas a little bit, but also build, we're building another subscription product too, which is going to be um, super awesome and basically enable like anyone to get their song they record on rap chat onto streaming services. So onto Spotify and Apple music and wow. give them a chance to, to monetize their work. So we're really excited about that because it'll, it'll kind of complete the artist journey, right? Like we view it like rap chat as, as the launch pad for those that want to become an artist. And uh-huh. a lot of these artists haven't had access to get their music on streaming to make money. And so we're going to handle it all in one app with a, a few taps and, that'll be a, another subscription product. So, you know, we'll have a couple of different ones floating in the app, uh, but really excited about that. And yeah, it, I mean, it adds a whole new uh, dynamic to, you know, the business and how you build product as well. Uh, but for us, it's pretty complimentary because we never like, even when we launched subscriptions, you know, we obviously had an existing user base and mm-hmm. we, we've been around. So um, we, we didn't paywall anything that was already in the app. You can still come in, make a song, do everything, but just additional functionality that we're kind of consistently leveling up the user. Um, you know, we're starting to build, yeah, paid products around that. Right. Be cautious with your uh, commitment your, with your loyal users uh, and uh, remember that they trusted you in your brand and uh, don't let them down. Oh, absolutely. That's, that's like if we, yeah, if we would have done that, I mean, you know, that, I don't know. Yeah, wouldn't have been worth it. Right. And since you've said about the upcoming and integration with Apple Music, I have a sense that Apple might buy you in a few years, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I we'll have see. a feeling it may, it may happen. <laughs> All right. We'll so see. <laughs> we'll see. Um, what marketing channels have have been working for RepChat? So you mentioned, obviously, uh, word of mouth, uh, probably paid ads, right? Yeah. So we, um, I mean, definitely organic, like that viral loop I talked about, like that's been, you know, we're constantly iterating on like that and making sure that runs, runs itself. Like that's a bit of a flywheel. And then, um, yeah, we're, we're starting to test out some paid acquisition, especially since we have like our revenue event, you know, so it's, Mm -hmm. it's a lot easier to, to kind of see that the economics, um, but 
Yeah, we're on, I mean, all the major ones like Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok. Right. Test right. it out, search, you know, some search ads. Um, I mean, we're always looking for, for new channels too. So I'd say we're relatively early in our paid acquisition testing, but I mean, seeing mm-hmm. some like really great results. So it's just, you know, how can we, um, you know, some of its capital and bandwidth as well, just to like double down because, um, you know, the economics do look good and we want to, you know, we want to 10 X from here. So. Yeah, definitely. Probably you may think about the uh, advertising on podcasts like Joe Rogan's podcast brought to yeah. you by rap chat. <laughs> Why not? I wonder how much that spot would cost. Yeah, given how much money uh, Spotify gave him <laughs> for exclusive, yeah, it could be a pretty big number. Um, Maybe the right. business of apps podcast. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are, guys. But we're not yeah. on the same uh, level as Joe. <laughs> not yet. Uh, uh, so, yeah, there you go. Yeah. What takeaways would you like our audience to have after listening to this podcast? Just a few things uh, so they can apply to what they're doing, what that would be? Yeah, I mean, just based off like my experience, you know, this is, I think all advice comes with a grain of salt, but um, it's easy to get like lost in the sauce, as I would say, like, especially as you're starting to scale your your app and say you're getting hundreds of thousands of users, like you instantly have access to like a hundred million data points a month. And Mm -hmm. and you you can kind of lose your mind over like, oh, what's this perfect event that predicts day seven retention or, you know, even trying to figure out your KPIs, like it can get, and I've been there, like it can just, you're like, holy, like what, what is going on? So Mm -hmm. um, I like, like I said, I really like going back to basics, especially when even you're scaling and you get access to more data. Like at the end of the day, you still got to figure out like, cause this could change on a yearly basis too. Like, who's mm-hmm. coming in and why. And so I really think like the product market fit engine and we made our own version of it. Um, like, you know, it, it's less about the exact questions and more just about like figuring out why people are there and what type of persona they are and what they want. Like that can help drive your your whole roadmap. Uh, it's actually like just simplifying everything, right? And uh, yep. that was kind of a big unlock because, um, you know, last year, especially when we were kind of trying to figure out our business model is like, wait, we have like X percent of our, our users are using this app every day and love it. Let's talk to them. Oh, they're here because they seriously want to make music their career. Oh, okay. Let's build, you know, additional tools that they just told us they want and would pay for it. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it, it kind of just, it helps clarify everything. And then after that, you know, once you're kind of refreshed on like, user research and even some quantitative data and you have your roadmap, that's a lot easier to analyze and build your KPIs as you go along, right? Because, you know, you have a whole new lens and like, I really think viewing your data through cohorts, like, and also just kind of segmenting out like certain, you know, whatever user behaviors, it'll it'll help clarify as well, because um, not every user is the same. And, you know, you can go read a bunch of blog posts and, They'll tell you what's good or bad retention or what's good or bad engagement. But I mean, none of that's really that helpful because like they're just assuming every user is the same and retention is measured a hundred different ways. Yeah. You know, so it's like you kind of got to, mm-hmm. in my opinion, build your own like philosophy, your own system um, and figure out what works for like your product, your users. And then ultimately, like you can build your business model that way, you can build your product roadmap that way, and you can build your like operating cadence and internal KPIs that way. Um, Because I've been there, man, there's just a lot, there's a lot of content out there. There's a lot of benchmarks, there's a lot of Mm -hmm. frameworks, like, I definitely still read all that and take some inspiration. But again, we kind of just like, build our own systems. And that I found that to be, you know, the, the most helpful way to scale. Gotcha. All right, so we're switching the gears because we've covered the major topic on the table. And cool. one of the goals of the show is not only to bring insights into a specific area of app marketing, advertising, and development, et cetera, but just to let the audience a little, to know a little bit better the guest himself or herself. So just a few questions to you. Sure. And question number one is, 
What smartphone do you have now? Have you been switching between iOS and Android or just staying one side all the time? I mean, yeah, for the past, pretty much since starting RapChat, I've been iPhone exclusively. So I right now actually have a 12 mini. So when they came out mm. with like a smaller device, I was like, yeah, I guess you guys can't see this because it's audio only, but that's a nice uh, beast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like the smaller, like it was kind of nostalgic and it's just mm -hmm. easier to hold in your mm -hmm. hand. So I'm, I'm currently, you know, running with the, the 12 mini, but I also usually have an Android device on hand to, to test rap chat and um, see how it looks on Android and all that. So, but yeah, iPhone pretty much consistently. Gotcha. Oh, let's jump before the iPhone era. What was your first mobile phone? Yeah, honestly, I think it was the Razer. I think it was the Motorola Razer. I don't know if you remember that, but the flip phone. I, I watched <laughs> the, the Matrix. I remember the, the phone. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that was it, or at least that was my dad's first phone that I stole all the time. And then <laughs> I eventually got into like, I forget, what, I think they called them the Envies, which were like, the, like, it was still a flip phone, but it also had like a flip up keyboard that could go horizontal. Mm. It was really sick. Uh, I, I still miss flip phones. I think they need to come back. Yeah, if you can just uh, uh, kind of combine the better life of those phones with the right. you know, these phones, that would be the uh, ideal world. Um, now, imagine you've left your smartphone at home. What would be the most missing feature for you? Probably not a phone. I love leaving my phone at home. But <laughs> I've been really into like, and I don't know if it's like healthy or not, but there's this app that like automatically tracks my sleep. And I find it like mm -hmm. so fascinating to watch. Like it does a really good job of like visualizing. So that's mm -hmm. like one of my favorite things to take a peek at. Obviously, I mean, I love Twitter. Like I, I do, I'm a, a Twitter junkie for sure. Um, I, yeah, I would probably miss like Twitter because I feel like that's my you know, plug to the outside world and also like sports, you know, or keeping up with industry trends, whatever. Like I just have all these different lists. Um, but yeah, I definitely like to unplug and, um, you know, I, even when I'm working, sometimes I'll put my phone in like a totally different room because mm -hmm. I know I'll grab it and, you know, it's just human nature so right yeah i would love to i would love to leave my phone more i guess is, is what i'm saying looking at your uh 12 mini uh what software and hardware features you believe it's still missing like what would you like this small bees to get yeah i feel like it has a lot you know i really it's a good question i mean for us like for the iphone the audio stuff's like pretty good like we can you know, it can fully support a recording studio, for example. You know, we have songs created on our platform that you would think were done in like a really expensive studio. So I'm mm -hmm. pretty happy with like iPhones, hardware and software from that perspective. Android is a totally different story. But um, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, it just continues to get better. I think the health data stuff is really powerful as you start to pair it with the watch. So that's been really cool. Um, Oh, yeah. I mean, one thing, and this is a plug to, to another app I'm a huge fan of called Opal. And, you know, what Opal does is it enables you to basically like shut off all the apps. So like mm -hmm. you can go into like distraction free mode and not have incoming notifications. Like I feel like Apple, I wish Apple supported that better. Like natively. there's something coming out along these lines, and I, I was 15. We'll see, not exactly, but kind of close, right? Yeah, yeah. They, they always say that, but then they never like like the messages. I don't know how. I I still don't have the ability to like truly turn off, you know, notifications from messages. Even if you turn off notifications, you'll still get the dots. So it's like, you know, Opal's actually been a sick app to mm -hmm. to help with just distraction free. And then yeah, now you got me rolling. It's all stream of consciousness but now i would say the biggest thing that has really been frustrating for both ios and mac os is like the search like somehow the search is just really bad like through messages through your finder to find files like i don't know what it is but they're indexing and it's just not it's hard to find exactly like what you're looking for in a message for example which you know when you 
I try to right. look all the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I see exactly what you're saying. One will hope they will fix it uh, with some, I don't know, iOS 16, 17 or whatever. Hopefully the sooner the better. All right, before I let you go, just a very final question. How can people get in touch with you and get more information about what you do? Yeah, Twitter for sure. I'm on there, uh, Seth Mills 21. You know, I think my DMs are pretty much always open and love connecting with anyone else that's that's building or just, any, just in general. Um, hit me up there. Yeah, that's probably the easiest way. I try to write here and there and we'll post it to my Twitter too. So uh, that's that's probably home base. Terrific. Thank you. Thanks so much for coming on our podcast, Seth. Thanks. Yeah, thanks a ton for having me. It was a blast. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. My pleasure. And that was Seth Miller, CEO at RepChat. To listen to more episodes, subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts. Just search for Business of Apps and you will find us easily. We release episodes on Mondays, so subscribe and you'll be able to get new episodes on your smartphone, tablet, or computer as soon as we release them. And please don't forget to leave us a review and comment on iTunes. It is highly appreciated. And all episodes will also be available on businessofapps.com. Thank you for listening. See you next week. Thank you for listening to the Business of Apps podcast. For more, head on over to businessofapps.com.